Good morning, everybody. Appreciate you um, hanging out with us, with us the first Sunday in 2019, a, a brand new year. And I, if you had a bad 2018, the best thing is it's over. If you had a good 2018, um, God always takes you higher. He always takes you better. Amen? And so at the beginning of December, we started what we call Vision Weekends. And we did uh, two Vision Weekends. And we, we changed our subject for Christmas and for New Year's. And I would encourage you, if you um, weren't here last weekend, I did a message about the fact that Jesus is still coming. So everything you need to know about the rapture, the second coming of Jesus, I would encourage you to go online and watch that. We've had a lot of great feedback on that one to teach you um, with some clarity and with faith regarding that subject. And so we're going to get back to this week, and then we'll wrap it up next week, our vision weekends. And then we'll move on to a, a new series for the, for the year. So what I want to do this morning is tell you a little bit of what I've said the last few weeks. Um, talk a little bit about uh, how vision changes things. Then I just want to share a few things that God's changing here at LifePoint and uh, tell you about some things coming up over the next couple of months. So everybody say, I'm ready. And so sometimes when you talk about vision, I, you know, I, I, this is my thing. I like this sort of thing. So I, I'll, I'll get real, real excited. But um, I, what I need from you is just to open your hearts, open your minds, be excited because I believe this, wherever you're plugged into as a church, whatever that church declares and teaches, it gets on your life. Um, whatever vision is thrown out there, um, when you embrace it, it becomes reality in your life too. So um, we've been talking about vision, and the Bible says some important things about vision, and there's lots of definitions about vision. I, I, I just believe this. Vision is the, the ability to foresee some things. And I, my definition is just it's a clear picture of who, who you are and where you're going. And the Bible actually says this in the book of Proverbs. It says, without that type of vision, people what? Perish. Well, most people know that, that scripture, but the word perish, it's a little word, but it kind of means a lot of stuff. It means, first of all, that if you don't have a divine revelation, people have a tendency to wander, regress, get off track, um, um, get out of their lane, so to speak. So it means that they wander off track, they wander aimlessly. So the Bible says without divine revelation, that's what happens to people. The Message Bible says it this way, if people cannot see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. So we have a tendency as people without divine direction and revelation to kind of stumble over things, stumble through, uh, miss the things that God has. So uh, I, I, as your pastor, I, I don't say this arrogantly, but it's my responsibility to foresee what God is saying for our lives and declare that to you. It's, it's my responsibility to um, foresee and prophetically have a voice to, to all of you that, that call LifePoint your home. And so we did that this morning in our first experience, and, and I believe we have some good things, uh, as I said, for you today. And so um, the things that we have seen or foresaw, we spend Vision Weekend saying those things to you. And so vision does a few things. The first thing vision does is it, it actually clarifies things. It gives you clarity. Um, vision also will challenge and change the current conditions. And it creates excitement. It creates in, in enthusiasm. And so vision is, is a powerful thing uh, to, to, to be able to um, reveal to you. And so every year, first of the year, I pull out a pair of binoculars because this is how I see things. As your pastor, I, I, I look out in the future, and I pull things into focus, and I declare them to you. And so that's what we've been doing, as I mentioned, in, in this series. And every year, usually about August, God just impresses on me a statement or a theme for the new year. And we get together, and we take that theme, and we, we figure out how to communicate it. We figure out um, how, how, to, how to say it clearly. We figure out how to plan it into the calendar. Because, let me say this to you, just because God says something about your life doesn't mean it's going to happen. We have to accordingly adjust, plan, strategize, set some goals, surrender some things, make some alterations. Are you all with me? Habakkuk said this. It says, the Lord answered and he said, write down the vision, make, make it plain so he may run that reads it. I believe there's some things God wants you to run with this year. You know, last year at this time, I got up here and I said, God told me to tell you that this is going to be your year of freedom. I did that so you could run with those things. So we talked a lot about freedom last year, a lot of testimonies about people being free from some things that had held them bondage and held them in captivity for a long time. And so I got up here a few weeks ago, and this is what God told me. If you haven't been here uh, for a few weeks, this will be the first time you hear it. But God told me to tell you that this is the year of happenings. Everybody say happenings. 
All right, now act excited. Pitiful. Let's try it again. This is your year of happenings. All right, I feel warm up. I'll stay for the rest of the message now. So uh, there, there's just something God put on our heart, and a happening is, is an event or a series of events that creates um, response in your spirit or response in your emotions. And so it's something that, that will happen. And so God just said this, this is the year of, of happenings in, in our life. So obviously that's exciting. Woo, but what does that mean? I said, God, so what will happen this year? And so th- this is what God told me would happen. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. But there are three things God says will happen this year. He said, first of all, there are things that are appointed. There are things that are due. And there are things that are expected. Appointed, due, and expected. So when I say appointed, here's what I mean. There are some things God has appointed in your life for 2019. It could be relationship. It could be finances. It could be healing. It could be attitude adjustments. It could be um, beliefs that are elevated. But there are just some things God has appointed in your life. It could be some relationships God wants to eliminate from your life this year. He could want to promote you this year. There may be something brand new he wants to, you to learn from his word and discover some truth. So that means there are some appointed things. And the Bible says this, if you seek him, he will reveal those things to those who are seeking him. So I believe there are some things that God wants in your life and they are, are appointed. But the only way you can know is to ask God, God, what's appointed for my 2019? And you say, well, how do I know it's God? How, what if I miss him? Well, what if you don't? Oh, what if he reveals something coming your way and you're ready for it? Are, are, come on, y'all out there? So there's, there's some things I believe God wants to reveal that are just appointed in your season, your next season. Then there, I, I said it this way, we need to remind God what's due in our lives. You say, well, that sounds a little bold. Well, the Bible says put God in remembrance of what he said. So Galatians says this, chapter 6, verse 9, it says that there's a time to sow some things, but then there's a time to reap or harvest those things. So every promise in the Bible is yes and amen. So if there are some promises you've been believing for, the Bible says we need to remind God what's due. I didn't write the Bible. Y'all got that? I didn't write that. God said put him in remembrance. So I know in my life there are some things that I'm reminding God are due in my life. Now, Don't misunderstand me because just because you went through something rough doesn't mean you do something good. It's how you went through those things. It's how you faithed your way through some things. It's how you kept believing when everything was against you. It's how you kept holding on. So God will honor your faith. He doesn't honor just because you had a a bad season. Y'all with me? But there are some things due. We just need to remind God, God, this this is due in my life. I've been dealing with this physical issue. I want to remind you, your word says, I'm the healed of the Lord. I believe healing is due in my life this year. Or God, I've been a tither and a giver, and I've been believing, putting my faith out there about this financial breakthrough. I believe it's due in my life. We need to remind God what's due. And the other thing is, we, we need to proclaim what we're expecting. You need to have a few goals. Well, just whatever happens, happens. Whatever the Lord wants, the Lord wants. No, that's, that's wrong thinking. We just read the Bible says in the back, put some stuff down. Put some goals out there. What are you expecting? Proclaim some things. Y'all all right? How many agree with this statement? God can do anything. How about this? We serve a big God. God does the unexpected. I'll caution you on that because I don't believe God does the unexpected. God will surprise. I believe God exceeds the expectations. See, Galatians says he can do above and beyond what you ask, think, or imagine. We just think, well, it's just magic. God just does whatever. And No, God does. We put our faith out there. God honors your faith or your confident what? Expectation. So I would say this. How about give, how about give God some big goals for the year? Well, what if I don't reach them all? But what if you reach a few of them? If your goals, well, you got some goals here and you get here, isn't that better than here? So I do believe that it's your year of happenings. And here's what's going to happen. Some appointed things, some things that are due, and some things that are expected. Now, I want to give you a gift this morning to help you. And you can get it on your way out in the foyer. But, so we ordered these really cool no- notebooks that say it's a year of happenings 2019. Here's why I want to give that to you. is because I'd like you to take this, get with God during the month of January. We kind of set January uh, as a time to seek God. And just say, God, what's, what's appointed in my life? Uh, let's put it this way. What if, what if you've been um, believing for Mr. Right or Mrs. Right? 
what, and what if God appointed a divine meeting this year? And what if he told you in January that I'm going to bring someone divine, divine into your life? You're going to have an expectation, aren't you? So you're going to be looking, is that him? That ain't, that ain't him. I can tell you that. That, <laughs> that might be her. That There's going to be what? An expectation. Instead of you just wandering through life, well, I'll take him. That's all that's left. And instead of that, an expectation in your life. Are you all with me? I'm trying to be funny. I don't know if it's working. But anyway, so we'll, we'll, I, I want you to, God, this is what's appointed. How about this? God, this is what I want to remind you to do in my life. And God, this is what I'm expecting in my life. So you can get that on the way out. They'll make sure that you have those. Um, start bringing that with you. Put some notes down. Put, put, your, put some vision. Put some thoughts in there for 2019. Because I believe what God wants to do is he wants to wow you. It, did, didn't the word of God say something? Doesn't the word of God say something like this? You don't really have because you haven't really. You cannot ask if you can't envision it. It's not like, well, I just ask random. No, you, you have to envision, Right? So then, then I asked this question. I said to God, that's what's going to happen. How's it going to happen? Now, you understand God's not obligated to tell us how something happens. That's why it's called faith. But he, he let me in on a few things, and he just said, this is, it's as by the Spirit, which we, we looked at that scripture. He said, it's as by the Spirit, which means this. God's going to do some happenings, manifest some happenings, create some happenings, reveal some happenings in your life and my life. We learned this by the glory of God. I do believe it's a season, it's an hour. God wants to show up and show off his glory in his church again. Show up his glory in his, his sons and his daughters' lives again. And so how does God do these things? By his glory. What's the glory? It's just a manifestation of the presence of God. It's a manifestation of the goodness of God. That's what the glory of God is. It's not something really, woo, it's the glory of God. It's just God showing up. And he might show up, and when God shows up, everything's subject to what? Change. If you've been under sickness, God shows up, the glory shows up, your sickness is subject to change. If God shows up and shows off, your depression is subject to change. If God shows up and shows off his glory in your marriage, your marital issues are subject to change. See, when the glory shows up, it never leaves you the way it found you. So that's sort of some things we've, we've been talking about uh, for, for, for the last few weeks. So let, let's talk about so, uh, how vision challenges and changes current conditions. As I mentioned, everything is subject to change. So change is defined as the process of things continually becoming different. Now here's what I know. Everyone says, we love change, but you don't. I'll, I'll be honest with you, some areas of my life I love change, and there's areas of my life I'm like, don't touch that, right? Uh, and my wife, there's areas of her life where she loves change, and there's areas of her life where she doesn't love change. My, my, my wife loves to m move the furniture around, like, frequently. Any, anyone else do that? I'm like, it's in a good place, why change it, right? Our office is downstairs, we have this door in the middle, every two weeks, she's like, how could I change this office around? And mine's been in the same place. I'm like, I got it how I want it. It works. But you know what? God never changes. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. He doesn't have to change, but how many know we, we do? Here's the awesome thing about God. When you are, are in a relationship with him, you're always changing, but you're always elevating your game. You're always going higher. It says we go from one level of glory to the next level to the next. But to go, think about it this way. Your attitudes need to change. I believe in 2019, your attitude needs an altitude lift. I believe your beliefs need an elevation. Don't make me come down there. I would, we're on live stream, so I can't walk down there. I'd be down there. I'd be all up in your grill. But I believe God wants us to what? Alter. And that's a good thing about. Uh, but here's the deal. A lot of times we think, well, God has to change us before he can ever use us. He uses us in the process of our change. Because he's the one doing the changes. So I think we ought to be open to change. But let me, let me tell you a couple things about change. The first thing about change is this, is that um, change is, uh, let me say how I worded it. Change, uh, this is the way I word it. Change is challenging. In other words, it's often uncomfortable. Because it can be risky. Because it messes with our security. And it messes with the fact that we are accustomed to doing something a certain way. And listen, the older you get, 
sometimes you know what changes. <laughs> I see people like, yeah. You're like, well, leave it alone. I don't want it to change. Well, it hasn't worked the last three years. Why, why would we leave it the same way? So what vision does is it lets us look at our current conditions, our current lid or our current level, and vision starts to challenge it because vision is a divine revelation that it could be better, that God could do something stronger, it could increase, but we, start, we have to start having vision. And when you start having vision of it being better or larger or being elevated, what starts to happen? It's a little risky because we're comfortable. See, when you were younger and you didn't have any money and you didn't have any family, change was just frequent. When you get a little bit older, you get a little bit more responsibility, you got a little bit more stuff. Come on, are you with me? Change becomes a little more challenging. And I would encourage you with this. Always be willing to change. And I know that's easier said than done, but vision will challenge and change your current condition. If you want a certain situation in your life to change, it starts with vision. Let's say you're dealing with something physical. And this, is, this seems like a simple principle, but it's biblical. Let's say there's a physical challenge or restriction in your life. And you would like it to change. It starts with envisioning. If you're having trouble walking, start envisioning yourself running. If you're having a, 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 a challenge uh, with, with a certain area, have a vision of it being different. It all starts with a vision because vision will start to challenge mediocrity. It will challenge stagnation. It will challenge where So just get some more vision. Because the Bible says without it, you stop progressing. So the first thing about vision, it, it, it is challenging. It will challenge where you're at. Here's the second thing about vision is it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Here's the thing the Bible calls change. It, it, it puts life in seasons. The Bible says there is a season for everything. There's a season of birthing new things. There's a season of, of death to things. There's this, so change means what? Seasons. The see, we live in a state where seasons are, are definitely... Um, you can observe the change in seasons. Some, some states, not as much. But here, so we, we know the, the change of seasons. And every time there's a change of season, some things fade out and some things are birthed. And I believe you're stepping into your brand new, better season because God always takes us, what? Higher. And God always redeems our yesterday and sets us up for what? Elevation and growth. Matter of fact, I would say it this way, that change is good because change always produces what? Growth. Y'all got that? If something is not changing, it's dying. It's not growing. So change, and now here's the thing. You don't have to believe in the power of change. It's kind of like this. You don't have to believe in gravity. But jump off a bridge. There are some things that work, whether you believe in them or not, right? And change is one of those things. Here's what they say. A lot of people, as they get mature in years and in their elderly years, one of the things they say they notice is how quick things change. And I do believe we live in an hour and a day where things change rapidly. I mean, think about how quick technology changes. Think about how quick things change. I mean, you know, um, cell phones came out. It was awesome. Now cell phones are changing all the time. Technology changes. So there's change. But change can be challenging. Change is inevitable. And here's the other thing. Change is essential. So we, we have these options. We, we, can, we can look at change and we can just try to ignore it. We can look at change and we can t try to defy it. Or we can embrace change. We can actually be catalysts for change. We can be what I call change agents. But what if you just embraced the potential of your life continuing to change? Not, especially when you're starting to get a little bit older, what if you embrace the theory that I, if I keep changing, I keep improving? Instead of, you know how we say, well, they get older and people just settle in. To the, I want to keep changing. As long as I'm changing, how I many know I'm breathing, I'm growing, I'm elevating. And so I believe this year, I want to give you this challenge, okay, that it's your year of happenings. There are some things in your life God has appointed. There are some things that are due. Somebody got something due? And I believe there are some things that we can proclaim as our expectations, but here's the deal. Just because we say it's the year of happenings doesn't mean it just happens. In our lives, we need to look and we need to envision what would those goals look like. How would it change my life? If I'm believing God to show up and have a happening in my marriage, what, how would it change? What would make it better? What would make my life elevate? Start to get a vision for it. Vision will put pressure on your problems. 
Vision will put pressure, not on you, but it will put pressure on your attitude. It will put, it will put some pressure on your beliefs to the place where it starts to change them. And I do believe if God wants to have some happenings in your life, it's not God who has to change. It's us who have to start to change. Surrender some things, lay some things down, let God alter a few things in our life so he can show up frequently and, and, and manifest his glory and change some happenings. So when people come up to you this year and they say, hey, what's happening? You say, you better sit down because God has been happening all year. Now, I'm not saying that you're never going to have a few challenges in the new year, but I am saying I do believe God spoke this to me. That's why I'm being so bold about it. Now, um, now, let me read this scripture before we go on. This is a great scripture, and I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. Isaiah 43, verse 19 says this, forget about what's happened. That, that, that's a bold statement. There are some things we need to forget that has happened. Even some good things. We can get stuck on, well, I like how it's been in 1984. I still got the same haircut. I got that just because I love the 80s. We, we need to forget the good and the bad, right? Move on. And look what it says. Don't keep going over the old history, but be alert. Be in the moment. Be present. I'm about to do something that is brand new and it's bursting out. I love the last part. It says, don't you see it? See, you may not see it. That's why God told me to come up here this morning and say to you, I've seen it. It's a happening by his glory. I believe God wants to bring some miracles, some signs, and some wonders back into his house and back into the lives of his kids. So that's my personal challenge to you. And so i like to take just a few moments, tell you some things God's doing uh, with our leaders here, some changes we're making and some things we do that affect you. And then end it tell you just like a few things that are coming up over the next couple of months. And so when I say vision and change, I want you to know that there's some areas God's talked to us as leaders about changing in our church. And the first one is changing some things in our core. You know, your core is the central part. It's the important part. It's the heart of things. And so a few years ago, um, our, our church, some of you, a lot of you weren't here. A few of you were, but our church really came under uh, an attack. Just it was, it's the only way to put it. An attack, and we had some staff members, and they actually um, deceived, if you will, uh, uh, several people. I mean, hundred and some people away from our church. And so during that time, as leaders, we had to regroup with vision. We had to regroup with um, strategy. And at that time, we we were kind of in survival mode. And at that time, God started to speak to us, and you've heard us say, and it's on all of our walls, that it's all about life change. And we've said these three things, that you need to get involved, stay connected, and become a bringer. And that, that's kind of been at the core of what we've been saying. And so as we went into the fall, I just felt like that needed to change. It was, it was becoming inclusive, inward focused, and we needed to be during that season because we were just, we were just trying to survive a, a season of attack. And so I felt like God said, That's, that is behind you, and I want you to change the vision statements. And so he gave us these three new things that, you, that you'll start hearing that I believe puts us on mission and puts us on assignment. First of all, it's all about life change. That doesn't, that doesn't change. We're not changing that. But here's the three areas that God gave me uh, that I'm going to share with you. One, that we honor God. Two, that we alter culture. And three, that we change lives. So it's all about life change. It's about honoring God. It's about altering the culture around us. And it's about changing lives. And let me just speak momentarily on each of those. Uh, and you might have, some of you may have seen a teaching I did uh, maybe a couple months ago uh, where I talked about honoring God. And I said something like this. It's not about programs. And it's not about people. It's about God. There have been times in my ministry life that it's been about programs to an extent, and there's been largely times it's been about people, but I want you to know it's not about people and it's not about programs. This is about God. Now, when it's about God, thank God, it's about people. 
But sometimes in the church world, we get so focused on helping people and reaching people and making sure people are okay that we forget it's not about what people say or want. It's what, about, it's what God is saying. And I want you to settle that in your heart too because as I mentioned, if this is your church, settle that this vision, whatever I teach here, if this is your church, it gets on you, gets in you. And so when we say vision, it's also a part of your life. And so I want you to make this part of your life. The top thing in my life is honoring God. My lifestyle, my words, my actions. What, what's God saying? That's what settles it. And so we, we, whenever we're talking about things, it comes back to that question. What's God saying? <clears throat> what, 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 what was it that God said? Because what, what, we're going to honor God. So as a church, it is about life change, and the first thing will change your life if you start honoring God. Second thing is this phrase, altering culture. So it took me back to... When me and my wife and family first moved here and we accepted the position of, of pastors, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. We actually hadn't even moved here yet. <clears throat> and I was sitting down. I was putting some notes together to speak here on a Sunday morning. And I said, God, what, what's this thing about? Why did you call us back here? Um, is this temporary? Is it? And God just started speaking to me. And he said, I sent you here to alter the culture. So that's been an assignment that's been on us. We haven't talked a lot about it the last couple of years, but God said, bring that back to the forefront. So I want you to know our assignment, part of our assignment is honoring God. Another part of our assignment is to alter the culture. So part of your assignment is to honor God. Part of your assignment is to alter culture. That means there's some things around us that need altered, and I believe that the power of the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit, the truth of the word of God, the power of freedom, the things we teach, I believe that's what changes things around us. Now, let, let me read you a scripture that I know you've, you've, you've heard before, and you're probably wondering why I'm reading it with, with, in the middle of what I'm saying, but, but I'll tell you in the end why I'm reading it. So in the book of Matthew, Jesus is having this discussion with his team, and he's getting, really, he's getting to their heart. He's getting to the rubber meets the road type of mo a moment, and Jesus said this in, in Caesarea Philippi. He said to his disciples, he asked a question. He said, who do you guys say that the Son of Man is? And their answer... I can, I can sense what they're saying. They're trying to figure out what the right answer is. And they say, well, some people say you're actually John the Baptist, which doesn't make any sense because John the Baptist was alive when Jesus was born. And then he says, well, other people are saying that you're the prophet Elijah. Other people say you're Jeremiah or you're just another prophet. And then Jesus says to them, but who do you say I am? See, that's a question we all have to ask with our own lives. Hey, what does culture say about God? What does religion say about God? What does that pastor say about God? But who do you say he is? And, and so Jesus says, but who do you say I am? And then Peter answers, and Peter says, you're the Messiah, you're God, you're the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, and he said, Simon, you're blessed. Because, look what he said, he said, you didn't learn that from a human. That was given to you by my father. In verse 18, so G after that, Jesus says, now I'm going to say something to you, Peter. The word Peter means a small rock. He said, Peter, on this rock, he didn't mean on Peter, he meant on all those who confess that Jesus is Lord. He said, I'm going to build a church, my church. Whose church is life point? It's his church. Who builds the church? He builds the church. And look what he said, all of the powers of hell cannot conquer a church built on the right confession. And then he goes on, he says, and I'm going to give the power and the keys to the kingdom. Think about that. Jesus said the keys to operate faith and to operate the power of the kingdom of God on the earth, I'm actually going to give to the church. And he says, if it's bound in heaven, you can bind it on earth. And if it's loosed in heaven, you can loose heaven on earth. Now, here's the thing about this particular scripture. Jesus always taught in what we call parables. He would compare things so things would have great explanation to people, right? And so Jesus is standing at the foot of this massive st rock structure. It was hundreds of feet of this massive rock. And he's standing at this rock, and at the bottom of this rock was a cave. And this cave was known in Jewish traditions. They thought it was the place where the underworld and darkness would come and go. Obviously, they weren't right about that, but they believed that the power of darkness came and went from that cave under this rock structure. And Jesus, standing at the foot of that cave, said this, on this rock, I'll build a church. 
And on this rock, I'll create a movement. And on this rock, I'll raise up a local church. What was he saying? In the backyard of the devil, in the place where the evil seems the worst, I'm going to build my kingdom. What was he saying? Hey, watch, my kingdom will alter culture. And there are some things in our culture around here that, that, I, that I sense, I pick up. You may not be from here. Um, maybe you've sensed it. If you're from here, you may not have noticed it, but you, but you probably just sense it. One thing around here is, is poverty. It's just in the mindset of some people. And poverty is devilish. There is no part of poverty that's righteous or is from God. Poverty is in our culture. Apathy is in our culture. You know what apathy is? I don't care enough to do something about it. These are things that are in the culture around us. Then there's this word I hear a lot of people say, well, there's just oppression in the area. Well, here's what I believe. I believe, and I'm just talking life point. I'm not responsible for another church. I believe that God's called us to have impact and have influence right in the devil's backyard. And if there's poverty around us, we're going to keep preaching prosperity. And if there's apathy, we're going to keep preaching faith and vision. If there's oppression, the Bible says oppression lifts when you put on a garment of praise. We're going to raise up the name of Jesus. Here's what I believe. I believe oppression. I believe poverty. I believe these things that are just ingrained in our culture. One, God can raise you up out of it. Two, he can use you as a change agent to bring change. So my challenge is let's stop agreeing with that conversation and, and have a vision for something different. And I believe that's something he's telling our church. Hey, honor God, alter the culture. And, and so there's an assignment. I believe God wants us to ha reach out further into our region. If that means having some churches or ministries in some other location, that's something God put on us. Because there's some things God told us to preach on. Faith, grace, freedom, into our culture, in the devil's backyard. Are you with me? Yeah. And so that's just the assignment he gave us. And the last part of that is just changing lives. Now, now let, let me ask you a question. Maybe since you came here and you started hearing about grace. Or you started hearing about faith. Or you started hearing about the Holy Spirit. Has it changed you? Has it altered you? What God wants to do is, and I'm not saying we're perfect. And we don't all got it all together yet. But God has started to alter you and he wants you to be a change agent. So when you go to work, you're a change agent. When you go to Walmart, you're a change agent. Walmart needs it. I'm sorry if you work at Walmart. I'm just saying... Once in an own, I mean, it's rare, but my wife will drag me in there. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, we need to alter the culture. Anyways, that's, that's the whole, that's, they've got a website for that. But I believe this puts us back on, on assignment and mission. So it changes our core. Here's another thing it changes. It just changes our culture. I'll say more about this next week. But God told me, he told us, he said this, change your core values. And he said, change it to this, that we're purposeful. That we are intent about fulfilling the assignments. God, God gives churches assignments. He gives ministers assignments. He, he also said this, make this a core value. He said, connected. We're better together. Then he said this, be generational. That's always been one of ours. But we always used to say this, we're about the next generation. But I want you to know, I changed that because we are about the next generation, but we're also about the now generation. I really love the fact that our church goes all ages. I think it's cool that there are some younger ones here, and there's some, some with more tread on the tires. It's been around a while, right? I think we have a great mixture. Um, God also said, you know, make growing one of your core values, that we're, we're learning to live a faith-filled life. And then serving, we serve with excellence on it. I'll talk about that more next week. So the year of happening. So it's changing our core here, which I think is exciting. It's putting us on mission, um, changing our culture. And here's the last thing I want to talk about. It's changing our calendar. So um, I just want to share with you a few things that are coming up over the next few months. It's not the whole year. It's just a just some events that are coming up. Just put these in your mind. Put them on paper. Um, so um, if we're saying this is the year of happenings, our responsibility is to create things in the calendar this year where happenings can happen. Same thing in your life. My calendar needs to start evolving around opportunities for happenings to happen. So in the month of January, we always do 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so that kicks off this Wednesday night. And so here's how we do it here at, at, at the church. On the back of your card today, there, there is something to pray about. We're all going to be praying about the same thing every day for 21 days. So 
prayer and fasting. I'm not going to talk a lot about how you do that. I don't tell you what to fast. But really what, what prayer and fasting is, it's setting aside or surrendering something in your life to make room for God, to be more aware and alert of the things of God. And so if you're just fasting without prayer, it's really called dieting. So it's fasting and prayer. See how that works together? So it's just seeking God. God says, I will reveal myself to those who seek me. And so um, here's what we do every year in January. So Wednesday evening, the fast starts. It runs the 9th through the 30th. That's 21 days of prayer and fasting. Every Wednesday night in the month of January at, yeah, at 7 o'clock, we have what we call altar nights. And we, we're going to pray. We're going to worship. We'll share some things with you. We're going to seek God. I believe during the month of January is why, why I'm giving you this gift. You can start finding out what's appointed for your life, what's due for your life, what, 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 what's expected for your life. So uh, if you want to come out from 6 to 6.50 downstairs, there'll be prayer. And then 7 o'clock, we kick off here. There'll be, uh, there'll be child care for you. So that's every Wednesday night in January. So do your best to get here. You say, well, you know, I work till like 5.30, and then I got to eat. Well, you don't have to eat because you're praying you're fasting, so you just come straight here, right? I do believe this. Do your best to set aside that hour, hour and a half for the next few Wednesday nights. That's in January. A couple of things we're doing in February we're real excited about. Our groups launch in February. And people always tell us, I wish there was another service. And so starting in February, the first Wednesday night of every month, we're starting a new service. Called first, it's called First Wednesday. And so the first Wednesday of every month, there'll be a service here. Night to worship, um, share whatever God puts on our heart. So it's called First Wednesday. There's programs for your kids that night. So everyone, everyone keeps saying that. That's not why we did it. God really spoke to us and he said, I want you to create another night. Because guys, to be honest with you, sometimes on Sundays we bring people in first service. We pump them up. We bring them out. We bring you in. And it, it, we're limited with time. So we really feel like we, we could teach you some more stuff. We could worship a little longer. We, we, we could see some other things happen. Um, so if I say to you, it's the year of happenings. How are we creating happenings? Well, Wednesday nights in January, and the first Wednesday of every month, it's a night for something to happen. Are you all with me? All right, so, so in March, there are, are a couple things coming up in March. Um, Steve Finn will be with us. He runs the Boys Ranch in Morgantown. He'll be here. Then the 15th and 16th, uh, we are doing the XO Marriage Conference again. It was a huge success last year. This year, it's in Morgantown. That is the 15th and 16th of March. That's a Friday and Saturday. Also, a couple things in March, we're doing a team night, and also in March, on Sunday nights, we're doing a thing called Classroom. You don't have to remember all that stuff. We'll, we'll tell you as those things get closer. And then in May, there's an event I want you to block out on your calendar. We're actually having what we call um, Life Point Revival Weekend. And so, and thank you, me and my wife will be here. We're, we're, we're excited. Y'all aren't, but we're excited. <laughs> so it is the first weekend in May, which is the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th. Friday night, Saturday night, two Sunday mornings, and a special event for our young people on Sunday night. So on Friday night, everyone has been here. Uh, if you haven't been here when Steve Munns is here, but those of you know Steve Munns, he'll be with us on, on the 3rd. How many have been here when Pastor Steve's been here from Go Ministries? He'll be here on Friday night. On Saturday night, the Pearsons will be with us. Um, 9.30 service, Pastor Steve will be preaching. Um, 11.30 service, the Pearsons will be. And then Sunday night for all of our young people, Pastor Josh Pancher will be here from the United in, in Canton, Ohio. So awesome weekend. So mark that out. Do everything to be here. I'll just pitch a tent, your RV out here. Um, be here for all those services. And here's why I say that. We're saying it's, it's a year of happenings. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to happen that weekend. I mean, not just that weekend, but I'm saying we're setting it aside for God to do something big, God to do something large. So, um, said a lot of things today. Let me summarize it with this, okay? Vision will always challenge and change where you're currently at. Vision's good. Change is good. Look at someone said, change is good. I believe vision precedes change. Change precedes some happenings. Let's all stand to our feet. So, just like we are putting into motion and allowing God to change some things at the church, I want you to open your heart so God can change some things in your life. You say, why, why would you change those things? Because we really felt like God tapping us on the shoulder and saying, let's change our core values. And we're in a different season. We were in a season then of pulling things back together. We're in a season now of starting to reassign and, and launch and and take some new territory, amen? 
Well, what my question would be to you is that if you would get behind us and be all in, and we all understand this is under the banner of what God's doing here in our region, um, God put us here to influence and in, in impact and change and rearrange some things that are in our culture. And it's exciting to know that he's trusted us with assignments like those. So we need to take our eyes off our small little world and say, God, use me to impact larger territory. Amen? Amen. How about we pray? Father, you're so...